video equipment rental costs paid for by peep code screencasts. Uh, yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> well, I, I had exactly a hundred slides, so I, I, I can talk before you the two hours straight if you understand Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't, so I'm going to give you a digestive version. Uh, I'm going to talk about the past, present, and future of the Ruby and its history and its, its philosophy and, its, and uh, the future forecast. Uh, more than 4,000 years ago, we had one language. <laughs> 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 and uh, thus, we speak the one true language. <laughs> But it was not great. So some people think about, hey, how about emulating the natural languages? <laughs> but it, it was great at that time, but not, not the, the multi-purpose. So it, it's a business oriented, yeah, you know, common business oriented language. You know. So the, let's steal from mathematics. And, uh, but some people just hate the uh, parentheses, too much parentheses. <laughs> so they made up the less parentheses version of the algorithmic language. And uh, it somehow it <laughs> uh, evolved or, or d d dissolved into <laughs> The C or Q, I and mean, it's descended C plus plus. And uh, it steals some ideas from Lisp and prior small talk, then it became the Java and C sharp. But they're very they're static or they're heavy language. So the more the flexible language, like Perl, or Python came out. Then our language, Ruby, came in. Uh, I, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't claim Ruby as a one true language, but let it flow. <laughs> uh, I started making Ruby 15 years ago, but before that, I was all fanboy and running with G8. And uh, in 1993, the fe February 24th, it, the Ruby project started. And at that time, it was a mere hobby, you know. I, I, I really liked to program, and I really liked the language, so I started programming language. It's <laughs> like this. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of amazing the, the, the building the, the Lego block that can uh, influence the world that this much, you know. It's kind of uh, far out of expectation. And then the goal of the language is the scripting or with nice clean syntax and with object oriented features. And the real goal is to enjoy my just to enjoy myself making pro making language, designing language, and its implementation, and uh, and the programming and the, the resulting language. And uh, its design process is uh, the, I took the list semantics with small dog object oriented system and with conservative syntax, and uh, it chop, chop the features in Perl and re reorganize into class library. And uh, some iterators from uh, flu and higher order functions from functional languages, and some files from Python, and that is. 
And uh, I released it to the public in 1995, December 21st in FG Sources. It's uh, the Japanese news group. And uh, in 1997, I was hired a company named NSCL South. The real name is Network Applied Communication Laboratory, but it's coined to make up the NSCL. And uh, I it, it is the, it's the company I, I, I'm working for, and uh, it's an open source software uh, integrator. And I worked, I became a full-time open source software developer then. And uh, in 1995, in, Jap in Japanese, first book was published. And uh, next year, we have the first English version. This is the second, second version cover, but you know, the first version came in year 2000. And uh, in 2004, we on Rails came in and changed the life a lot. <laughs> About 10 years ago, the Ruby, what's that? Language, see the school Java. <laughs> 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 Five years ago, Ruby, oh, I've heard it, but I haven't used it yet. It's typical. Two years ago, Ruby, I know, it's for Rails. <laughs> 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 Isn't it? Or, can I use Ruby without Rails? <laughs> <laughs> Is it possible? Uh-uh. <laughs> but, but situation is changing a bit. Like, we, we have a book, From Java to Ruby by Bruce Hayden. And uh, if the reason behind Ruby is, yeah, of course Rails, you know, yeah. Ruby is not for Rails, but Rails help us a lot. And uh, Joy, the program, the Joy in the programming is a very important factor, but which, which is like a, what, the emphasis, not, the which has, be, has not been emphasized a lot in the industry. And, uh, Productivity is uh, very important. And then uh, think about the Rails the popularity is it was due to its productivity. And uh, we can consider it as a uh, domain specific, specific language for a web application on top of Ruby. So in a sense, Rails on Ruby. This is the right order, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, as, as Evan told, the VSL is very popular among us recently. And uh, we have the aspect for test, a rake for software build. And so, like, like this, it, it, this, this is in Ruby, and, uh, but it described uh, the the uh, express exp exp well, yeah, okay. <laughs> expression for the specific domain, and uh, with the the language the syntax support, it goes like this. You know, it's pretty. Yeah, the language itself is simpler, but you know the program appears the, the complex. So. Ruby helps VSL to appear cleaner appearance. Well, and uh, if I remember correctly, it's Dave Thomas once said the programming is the process of designing VSL for your own application. Is this what I said? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I propose the, the concept of the meta DSL, which is a good language to help you design a DSL for your application, right? And uh, even though I coined up the meta DSL the recently, actually the, the, in, the, in the plane from Japan, <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, they have been, uh, they have been, uh, Meta DSL for a long time. The oldest Meta DSL is at least, I think. 
And uh, this, the method DSL has a simple basic syntax, which is S, S expression, and a flexible structure with macro, and a flexible notation with reader macro, and with metaprogramming. And uh, simple and flexible syn simplicity and flexibility of the language makes less a perfect language for language experiment or test bed for new language. You know, there are a bunch of languages or the, or the dialects of Lisp and the Lisp, the DSL top on Lisp. But the, <laughs> the notation is too simple. But don't worry, reader macro can help you. See this this code. Do, you, do can you tell which language is it written in? It's not Ruby. It's in Lisp. By reader macro, you can replace the uh, something. <laughs> you know. So if you read the, the the shown URL, you can see the reader macro. It, it, the Japanese itself in Japanese, but but macro itself in in less. So I think you can read it. But you have to the if your language is too flexible, you have to start all over the, all over again and again, again for, for each DSL. So learning new language is very costly. So you know newbies don't want to learn new languages. So the, we have to keep a balance of the flexibility or simplicity and uh, the common sense that we can use to uh, use as a clue to understand the, the program. So sometimes smart people like behind uh, uh, something language. <laughs> just don't understand the nature of ordinary brain. Yeah. And uh, if I consider myself as a talented, I, I'm talented at uh, having a ordinary brain. I, I am a representative of uh, the ordinary brain. And uh, we should bring back a balance to the meta DSL, the flexibility and the understandability. So the, as a meta DSL, uh, Ruby has a very comprehensive model. It's object. And a natural and stable syntax wi without macro. You know, with macro, we can define uh, the whatever syntax you like. That, which means that whatever you have to learn whatever syntax someone, some other guy defines to use that. DSL, but uh, Ruby does not have a macro, or so the new DSL defined uh, on top of Ruby should follow the basic Ruby syntax. But Ruby syntax is uh, very flexible with blocks and other metaprogramming features or something. So you can read the syntax and get start to guess the the semantics and the meaning of the DSL. This is, this is the first, I don't know, first step to understand the, the DSL. As the popularity of the DSL grows, the, the, I don't know, the power of Ruby as a meta DSL can be enhanced or the, the value. That's why I, we love Ruby. And uh, from the Jab Java to Ruby again. Ah, oh, this is Japanese version. And Ruby became enterprise years these days. A lot of na big names using Ruby, some Microsoft, Oracle, IBM, Yellow Pages. Uh -huh. And uh, in the Gartner repo report, there are under one million professional Ruby developers now. That one million developers is a huge number, but we are projecting there will be four million plus by 2013. Whoa, four million, <laughs> incredible. 
Mark Driver and Anna Sats and Gelfman in Wee Week. <laughs> Four million, no way. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, no matter how Gardner the project and the forecast, uh, we are, uh, we are think, uh, increasing anyway. And it is a good thing that probably we can have bread, we can meet here, but not the, the number is not the first priority. We put the programmers first, you know, the, the joy of the programming and the, the productivity of the programmer comes first. It is dangerous. The, the increasing number of the Ruby programmer is, can be dangerous. And maybe uh, the Ruby is not well, you know, the many people consider Ruby as a young language, like a few years year old. But Actually, Ruby is uh, 15 years old, and the world gets a lot of people who don't know about Ruby. It, it, it can change the, the community. So we have to keep up the good attitude, even after the, a lot of, lot of uh, X Java programmer came in, or <laughs> X, I, I don't know, something language came in. We have to keep up the good attitude in the, in the community. And then the programming language has very long life cycle, like a full term. It's alive. <laughs> and then we, we must survive. You know, yeah, in a, the applications and frameworks uh, has a lot of shorter life cycle than the, the languages. So I think the, yeah, Rails is very popular now, but maybe in 10 years the, or five years, post Rails something will come, or the post web thing will come. But Ruby will survive then. We must survive. We must do something. And uh, so we have to do something for the future. But, but before that, talking about before talking about the future, we have to talk about the present. Uh, now we have the, so many implementations, right? MRI, which I did, and JRuby, Rubinius, Evan, Iron Ruby, Yav, Maglev, which is virtually a vaporware yet. And uh, MRI stands for Mass Ruby in this. And uh, JRuby is Ruby on JVM 1.8 compatible, faster than MRI, sometimes beats 1.9. Why is everybody beats my, my, my products anyway? <laughs> 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 JRuby people claim that uh, if JRuby runs slow, slower than 1.8, one it's official, I, we consider it officially a bug. <laughs> you know, and the Rubinus people beat beat one eight as well. Anyway, and the JRuby people just started to cover one nine recently. Rubinus, right? They ask him, ask Evan somewhere. <laughs> and Yav, Yav is the the core of the one nine. It it stands for yet another Ruby VM. It's after the in, uh, even after integrated the, the, into the official core. Yeah, it's still, it's still them, yeah, yet. Yeah. We, we, we are so used to that, this name. And uh, it's body called Stack VM, fast, fastest Ruby on Earth right now. And uh, 50 times faster on some benchmarks. Some benchmarks. Can be even faster. And uh, one nine language is the uh, splitting edge and classifying edge in the corner of the language, starting new features. And uh, I presented the Google Tech Talk in uh, February, so you can watch the video on YouTube. And, uh, and one line significant uh, the nanometer fiber block scope than M79. But uh, one, yeah, one edge is maintained by the other guys. 
already. And uh, he, he, he merged the, the enamel the stuff in 1.8, so it's not the 1.9 semi any longer. So I skip in number of stuff. Yeah. And fiber, uh, it's a covered sled, switch context manually, this and that, da da da. And well, the some some level is using fibers like uh, never never block or re revector. It's kind of very interesting technology library. So the it they might be a, a killer killer applications of the fibers at one nine and very, uh, we are very looking forward for to see how it goes and uh, m seventeen n stands for multilingualization and the seventeen characters between m and n <laughs> and m seventeen means a lot in a con a, a uh, depends on context uh, it, uh, the handling of locales, handling of characters, handling of glyphs, handling cultures. Uh, but in for us, it means handling characters. And then how to, there are some way to handle characters, like by ignoring tough cases, like using ASCII. Okay, we, we have 26 characters. That's enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, oh, okay, okay, we have the room for 256 characters. That's enough for all, all the people all over the world, at least in the Euro Western world. But it's not good for Japanese and me. <laughs> <laughs> and Unicode. Uh, Unicode is very good, good approach. And, uh, we have the several encoding scheme, uh, the UTC-8, UTC-15, FTSAT32, and the most one is to do the multilingualization by this, uh, this scheme. Java, Pro, Python, does it, does it. And the uh, UTC-8 is a ASCII compatible schema. It, it has a variable char character length, and uh, for N for random access, but per use and uh, per use of UTF-8. UTF-16 is used by Java, Python, and, and uh, other languages. But, but remember, it, it still ha has the uh, ON complexity of random access. And uh, yeah, good old UCS, UCS2 days are gone. UTF-32 has 30 bits per character and it is O1 complexity for random access, but, but from our experience, uh, we, we don't have much application of the random access in, in strings, so it's not that important. And uh, the factory language is UTF32, I heard. The Unicode is not the perfect solution. And um, just because, you know, the Unicode we have a bunch of legacy data the in IS Latin one or the our SysDisk or EC, uh, JP, KL, the Chinese encoding, MEI encoding, Vietnamese encoding. We have a lot, lot of legacy data. And uh, in the, we have to convert back and forth from to Unicode. And uh, sometimes the data is broken or lost. So it's, it's kind of burden for us. It, and uh, unfortunately, it's, it's unsolvable due to history reasons. I don't know coming get into the detail, but, but many people made a very bad mistake in history in the character set. <laughs> so it is unsolvable. So until we, so we un, un, uniformly have Unicode data, and uh, we we still facing some problems by the Unicode. And uh, and some res researchers, or historical people, uses the uh, extra Unicode character that characters does not include it in Unicode. The now, 
Unicode defines uh, 100,000 characters right now, but it, still we have the, some characters we, we don't have in Unicode, like uh, old char Chinese characters or the old Vietnamese characters or something like that, or even Klingon characters. <laughs> so, and the, some people really, really need to process these text data. So, the Unicode centric up the language does not help them. So if there's no perfect encoding, how about making it pluggable? That, that's our approach. So we need to, we, we don't have to convert every back and forth in the, the universal encoding bit and uh, no encoding breakage. And uh, it is possible to extra encode characters can be harmed. Yeah, can be handled. The issue is, is it possible? And uh, it's, is it okay for performance? And uh, yes, it's possible. We did it long time with regex. One eight regex has the as treats and ASCII and UDF eight, GIF GIF and EUCJP at the same time, without without recompiling, we can dynamically switch the encoding. And uh, based on that experience, we made it in one nine. And, and for performance, the, we, we have all in a complexity of the uh, random access, but, the, but we do anyway, you know, UTF-16, UTF-8 has ON complexity as well. So it's not the issue, I guess. Like, then things like goes like this, but we had uh, the next ready session this morning, so we, we I skipped it. So, okay. They, I'm going to tell you about the new feature. Okay, Ruby 1.9 will be better Ruby than Ruby. Improved performance of feature feature bugs. And uh, we finally will have a stable 1.9 at uh, December 20th. Hopefully, and uh, we are going to have a feature freeze uh, two weeks later, 20, September 25th. So we have to, in uh, the last minute mode, <laughs> we are just putting in a bunch of weird ideas. <laughs> so you you are going to expect the stable one nine by Christmas, uh, unless something very bad happened. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> and uh, this year we gonna uh, we did assign the the uh, the release manager other than me more reliable person. <laughs> so the schedule will will going bet going smoothly I hope than the the previous releases. Okay. The little bit far more for our future. Uh, we are, after releasing Ruby 1.9 stable, so we are going to, to work on the, the Ruby 2.0, which is the innovation bug. And uh, in open source software, the community matters and the motivation matters. It's just because an you know, open source software should move forward or die. You know, if you, if you don't change anything for stability or the uh, reliability or something, but it's not fun. <laughs> so we have to keep some, doing something, enhancing language, the fixing language. So the, if you really, really need the stability or the reliability of the language, you can stick with one A. Yeah, we we declared it. There are gonna be any big change in one A any any longer. And uh, we need uh, something to focus on to have fun with open source activity. And uh, the the future the keywords for uh, future Ruby 
going to be a scalability, I think. Yeah, scalability and data size or the number of CPUs or the program size or team, even team size. And then for data size and the CPU number, we, are, we have to dig in uh, parallel and distributed technology like Octus or the, or like uh, in Revactor or the IPL related technology or something like that. We started the, the branch, which is named the MVM, multiple VM in the process. And so in, from these technologies, the, we will utilize more CPUs to crunch more huge data in the future. And uh, as a Ruby grows in the IT market, so the program size or team size will, will grow as well. So current Ruby is kind of focused on the small number of teams, like five people, four people, or the single, single person. But so to enhance the productivity with in a, the bigger team, we are thinking about uh, the keyword arguments, what's your name, space, the method combination, other as aspect oriented programming, or a more functional ish programming. <laughs> we, yeah, they are the fields we are going to work on. And then keyword free means the order free. Uh, specification of, of the, uh, the options in a method. It, it makes method call more readable, a lot of the FTP. And uh, open class is very useful and interesting technology, but it is pretty dangerous. You know, it can break the existing class, even the built-in class. For example, jcode.rb, which makes the uh, strings works on work based on characters, but it 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 could break so many soft existing software. So the global side effect is basically bad thing. The uh, the open class is the fundamentally a global side effect. So if it's I want to work on the statically scoped option class by the uh, by the technology name, the selector namespace, or club box. But it's it's easy to say say that, but it is pretty difficult to design and implement it efficiently. I don't want ma to make Ruby slower with. In by merging the selector namespace in the Ruby 2.0. So we have to work on uh, efficient implementation of the selector namespace in the future. And uh, method combination is a uh, method replacement hack using new alias. It's pretty common among the, the op open class in the meta programming, but it, it's kind of dangerous. It's easy to conflict. So uh, we, we allow r future Ruby to add a clean and before and after hooks after around the method. And it, it should be uh, stackable, like uh, the hook and the free hook, like this, <laughs> you know. You may know, you may remember the, the method combination in class, the yeah, common list. And then uh, we are thinking about uh, more functional programming like the lazy array and the delay and pause uh, to, to what? I don't remember the word in English. You know, the, the lazy evolution, yeah. <laughs> but there are very vague ideas for the future, but we are thinking about the future already. In summary, uh, Ruby service is 15th birthday on 28th February 24th, 2008 this year. 
and we'll be focused on program outsourcing and computers. And uh, Ruby has been recently accepted in the IT market, so that's fine. But don't forget our primary goals to have it en to enjoy programming. And uh, Ruby is made a DSL with good balance. And uh, we have the multiple implementation of the interpreters, and they are all great. And uh, our interpreter, the Yelp is improving, so are others, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, the future is in scalability, I think. We keep the language evolving to, since most vision matters, we need to move forward or die. So I don't, I don't want to die. <laughs> I don't want to kill the community. I don't want to die yet. Uh, maybe I'm going to work on Ruby for the next 40 years. <laughs> so, okay, that's almost all I have. Thank you. Video equipment rental costs paid for by Peepcode Screencasts.